is that there is a bankruptcy of a revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Now, don't assume you understand what I'm saying. You just write and be patient with me. The absence of a revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Man that is in honor and understand that it not. My Bible, your Bible, our Bible say that he will be like a beast in the field that perisheth. Psalms 82 and verse 5 tells us, they know not, neither will they understand, the Bible says. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse, and Jesus himself made reference to this verse. He said, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. But not knowing that will lead to the next verse. He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. There are many things that the Bible says the church is. There are many things that Jesus said the believer is. In communicating your interest for God and the things of his spirit, you have a responsibility to journey with the Holy Spirit through scripture to find out with the passion of an archaeologist, what did he say about me? What has he said about me? Gideon never took out time to find out he was hiding. As soon as the angel of the Lord came to him, he called him by his destiny. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, no, that is a foreign statement. Nobody in my father's house ever told us we are that mighty. We are the least. This is the information we have on record. We are the least in our father's house and the least of all the tribes. And the angel said, you are wrong. I'm bringing to you another identity. You cannot carry that revelation to the battlefield. You will lose already before the journey. At the end of it, Gideon blew with the shofar and 33,000 people were summoned. The same person who was hiding. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear me. This is more than a theological dissertation. It will be by the Spirit to give us a revelation of who we have become in light of who Christ is. Let's walk a few scriptures. Do you like scriptures? I promise I will not keep you later than necessary. If I show you this scripture and we wrap up tonight, that is sufficient for tonight. But I want you to be sensitive because you see, the same Lord is rich unto all. But the reason why it looks like certain people carry greater weights and dimensions of his glory is not that God decided to isolate a few people necessarily. The Bible says even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. He said there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial. Are we together? In fact, here's what he says. He says in a great house, there are four kinds of vessels, all called vessels, but four kinds. Of gold, silver, wood, clay. Some vessels already by their formation, they are unto dishonor. And some vessels are unto honor. And that every man has the assignment to transit himself. In our world today, clay and wood cannot become gold and silver. But in God's economy, transition is possible. That clay and wood can start evolving something you can do with God can change your state until you become silver and you become gold what does the Lord say about us in fact let me give you the three reasons there will be a discussion all through my sessions in this conference so number one is a product of identity first John 4 17 first John 4 17 please give it to us 1 John 4, 17. The Bible says, Herein is our love made perfect, entire, that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is. South Africa, is that in your Bible? As he is, not as he was. 
If the Bible says as he was, there are many, many things Jesus did not carry when he walked upon the earth. For instance, no man could receive eternal life from him when he walked upon the earth because the substitutionary sacrifice was not yet done. Are we together? So as he is, so are we. Not so we will become. So are we in this world. Reason number two for the current state of the church is that we have not yet understood by revelation our mandate, our purpose, and our commission. The second reason why the church carries a semblance of defeat, a semblance of weakness, is that we have not yet understood by revelation our corporate mandate, our corporate purpose, and our commission. The church is yet to understand our mandate, yet to understand our purpose. When Jesus walked upon the earth, did you notice that he was so meticulous in finding out and vocally declaring his purpose for being there? In Luke chapter 4, the Bible says he went to the temple and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him as his custom was. And the Bible says he found there where it was written concerning him. Apostle Paul making reference to that scripture, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. That means God is not deciding what to do with the church. The church came as a conclusion of God's intelligence. He factored in many things and arrived at this conclusion that the most formidable formula for this agenda is the church. And yet we wallow around as if God is hoping to know what to do with us. The inability to understand as a corporate people Listen, the basis for unity, many of you here are leadership experts and in leadership we learn that unity is difficult until there is vision. Vision is the force that binds, is the force of cohesion. It is impossible to be able to bring a people together in spite of their diversities until they have a vision and a creed that becomes bigger than their individual pursuits. This is how nations come together. Am I right on that? Yeah. So a vision is projected that becomes more superior to every other pursuit. Here in South Africa, we have such across Africa, across the globe. So any responsible citizen should be able to tell you the vision. I was sitting here when our beautiful people came to do the announcement and among the many things they said was with precision so that you are not confused. They told us the vision of the church, the mission of the church. Is that true? So the church, I can tell you, we have our individual agendas but the corporate mandate of the ecclesia is seldom known, seldom taught and largely not understood. So you ask the average Christian, why are you here? He will say things like to serve God or things like to worship God. It's just coining spiritual languages to, to just ease off ignorance and guilt. But you probe into what exactly they said, they will, you, it will be clear that they do not understand what they just said. We live to serve God. What does that mean? What does serving God mean? Coming to church? No. So one of the things we are going to be learning, if the church must rise to that point of influence and governance, it is important for us to know by revelation and without ambiguity our corporate mandate. What does God expect of us? Who is the believer? Why are we here? When we say church, what do we mean? Hallelujah. There are institutions that bring standardization to many fields and many practices. I believe that is so even in South Africa. So you have maybe an institution that regulates legal practice. Am I right on that? The assignment is to keep the practice within the coordinates of her vision. Because there is a tendency to veer off. Either through carelessness, through staleness of knowledge. 
or any other factor. And so an institution was set up to make sure that people refresh their understanding as to why, whether it's the world of businessmen, the legal world, or whatever it is, why it was set up in the first place. Some of the leading institutions across the globe, they lead their various fields because among the many things that they do is that they, they imbibe as a creed in the mind of the students, the lecturers, and all who are part of that institution. This is why we exist, for this sole reason. If at any point you are found fighting this bigger agenda, even if what you are doing is correct, with respect to that agenda, you are a rebel. So that as a believer, you don't choose what to do simply because of the spirituality around it. No. There is an exact description as to what believers should be doing. It, listen, what you call your purpose and your assignment is you drawing from a piece of that big picture. Your assignment is your contribution to that larger body of God's program. Are we together? And with all due respect, ministers of the gospel, this is an apostolic conference. One of the things we must restore is an understanding of our corporate mandate as believers. Why did God leave the church? So we have all kinds of ideas. For instance, some say soul winning. Some say various things, pieces of the truth. But there has to be a concise and an intelligent presentation that matches God's expectation. This is why this convergence was allowed by the Spirit. So in addition to knowing our identity in light of who Christ is, we need to understand the corporate mandate of the church. Have I lost you? Are we together? Let me give you reason number three. What is the third reason for the current state of the church? Do me a favor. Your only thank you gift for me is to promise me you are going to listen to this message again. And that you are going to extend this message to anybody you know who loves God and is very serious. This is beyond a, an anointed preacher sharing truth. This is God bringing order and restoration to his body. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that the days of superstar Christianity is over. No. God's agenda is bigger than any Joshua Selman. Or, no, no, no. It is a privilege for us to be conduits. Our focus must be him, his program, his agenda. And the truth is that in doing that, he will not leave us small. The economy was designed to lift everything that serves God. Did you hear what I said? God's economy was designed to lift and glorify everything that served him. Back home, we call it Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Everything. Nothing serves God and remains at the same level. No. So you do not have to bother about your state while you serve God. Because serving God will make you look like a fool. But if you understand the intelligence and the justice of God, your consolation is that everything that serves God rises as you lift his name. 